Welcome back to Cinema KC. We're here with another great Kansas City filmmaker, my friend John Davis. Hi, Hi John. Hi. Okay, we're going to see your film, The Time We Hold. What mm -hmm. can you tell us about this film? Well, I wrote it in 2009 after doing The Unknown Housewives of Kansas City with yourself and so others. So great, so I fun. I love doing that. After that, I wanted to do something more dramatic and see how I could handle that sort of um, atmosphere. So great. I wrote this and shot it that year. Okay. Let's take a look. Let's watch it. The Time We Hold. I guess it was a year ago. I was at the coffee shop. I saw this woman. She smiled at me. The sort of smile you're lucky to get once, maybe twice in your life. I felt guilty looking at her the way I was. I looked down and I saw her ring. She must have noticed mine as well. We went our separate ways, but I couldn't shake that smile. After that moment, I kept going back, hoping I'd see her. It took me a few times to approach her. When I did, it was obvious that we had a connection. Now, I look forward to the time we hold for each other. Okay. God, I've missed you. I missed you too. Sometimes I get nervous that you're not going to show up. Maybe you stopped wanting this. No, I always want this. Are you ready? Yeah. If I could touch you, then I would touch you, and I would take substance from your skin. And if I could hold you, then I would hold you, pulling you closer to where If I could tell you, then I would tell you, I would speak volumes of your life. If I could see you, I'd look right at you, I'm not afraid of the wind. is consumed with a fire of these pictures burning my mind and if I could take it I'd take it out oh, if I if I if I I guess that's it. Looks like it. Back to the real world. I'll see you next time. Can't wait. John, what a beautiful film. Thank you. Tell me about the music that you chose for the film. I decided 
two days before uh, I shot what what song I was going to use. I, so a difficult I, decision? It was, yeah, because, you know, uh, a lot of stuff I like was too obvious for what I was trying to say. And then um, I got a hold of Cody Wyoming and asked yeah. him if he had any music. And he, He's I, so great. Yeah, he is great. And I, I listened to about 15 seconds of the song that was used, If I, and I was like, that's the one. Yeah. So I called him and see if he could do an acoustic version of it. He said yes. And Well, it just adds so much. I mean, it really tells the story without saying without using any words at all. Exactly. It was just beautiful. Well, what's up next for you? What do you have? Uh, I'm coming, I'm doing a music video for uh, local artist K-Love, oh, and great. then uh, writing a couple other shorts and just trying to get some stuff made. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for sharing your film with us today. I really yeah. loved it. It's a beautiful for film. Here. All right, stay tuned. We're going to be back with another Kansas City filmmaker. <laughs> Welcome to Cinema KC, your own personal film festival. We're here today with my good friend Megan Flynn. Hi, Megan. Hi. Thanks nice for being to be on the here. show. Okay, so we're going to watch your short film, Adrift. Now, I know that this was a collaborative project between you and Nicholas Vidros. Tell us a little bit about how that came to be. I actually had a short film script that I'd been working on for about nine months um, in order to work with an actor friend of mine from LA, Craig Coyne. Mm. And Nick was looking to get into um, narrative short directing. And as he got to know Craig and I, and we started to get further into pre-production, he came to me one day and said, how much do you trust me? Um, which makes you nervous as a producer. Right. But um, he said, as I've gotten to know you guys, I have an idea for a completely different short. Wow. I've written a piece with the two of you in mind. What do you think of producing that? And that is the short film that became Adrift that Nick wrote and directed. Well, fantastic. We're going to take a look at Adrift right now. So stay tuned. Here's Adrift. What results, Craig? I haven't been with her in over a year. I didn't even talk to her until a few weeks ago. She called me and she said she needed to see me. That she had something to tell me. Stephanie has HIV. What, uh, what the baby, um, I don't know. What time is the lab open? A couple hours. So I'm interested in hearing about how that unique editing style. Well, uh, why Nick and uh, the DP Michael Stein both have a beautiful eye and just a really unique take on things. Um, beautiful palette. It's really rich. Very rich. And we dark. shot that on the red here. Actually, that was supposed to be an eight-minute, um, real linear piece. And as Nick got into editing it, we found that when we watched the eight-minute linear um, edit, 
we were really only invested in those characters for about the last 45 seconds. Yeah, it packs quite a punch there at the end. Yes, yeah, so yeah. he went in and did the non-linear version that you just saw, which starts at the beginning, and I think it's a much more interesting piece. I love that, that there were two stories happening, one at the same time, you know, one that we were watching and one that we were hearing. What was your big, biggest challenge on this? I mean, um, okay. The biggest thing for me was letting go, not being type A, and <laughs> focusing just as an actress, um, and being able to trust the director and my co-producer, Nick, and turn over that control once the camera started rolling. I wanted you to talk a little bit about what's coming up for you. Yes, so. I actually just um, directed and executive produced a new comedy web series here called The Wingman. Fantastic. And then I had the privilege of working with you again as a director. Um, I did a short film with you that was called Dog Tags. Now you won an, an inspiration grant from the Metropolitan I did. Arts Council. I did, from the Arts Council of yeah. Kansas City. Great organization that really supports artists here. And that short film was funded um, by a grant from them. And it's in post-production right now. should be out later this spring. How could we find out more information about what you're doing? Actually, if you just go to my personal website, you can check out. I have a creative page there, which has everything um, that I do as a producer, director, and writer on that page. Great. Thank you so much for being on the show, and thanks for sharing a drift with us. I can't wait to see Dog Tags. Thanks again, and we'll be right back with another filmmaker right here on Cinema KC. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to Cinema KC. We're here with Lawrence filmmaker Mark Havener. Hi, Mark. Hi, how are you? We're going to watch your film, And What Remains, and then we're going to come back and talk about it. Great, sounds good. Great. Let's watch the film, And What Remains. Nothing ever lasts. That's the way my dad saw things. Life had hardened him that way, I suppose. I want to take my son back to where my dad came from to try and understand why. Help him see how to go forward. Help us see what remains of who my father was and help me reconcile his imperfect legacy and the one I'm passing on. His roots are in the wheat fields of eastern Kansas, a long way from Southern California where I've raised my son. He was born here in Paola, in the middle of nowhere, the heart of the country. In these kinds of towns, neighbors didn't need fences. Don't live in a home without a front porch, my dad would say. When he was 10, he stood here and watched his mother be buried and his family split apart. That was the last time they would all be together. She died in 1917. She was 45. Don't ever count on anyone but yourself, he'd say. By the time he was 18, he'd saved $1,000 working the railroads. Long days of backbreaking labor. That was a lot of money in 1925, but his earnings didn't last long cousins he lived with spin it all. Hang on to your money, he'd say. Other people want it.
When the depression hit, he hopped a freight train west to look for work. He ended up in Phoenix, Arizona, where he met my mother near the beginning of World War II. His first marriage didn't last. The second, to my mother, ended after 20 years. I was seven and my family was split apart. I didn't see him much after that. If my father lost his hope along the way, I can see why. He walked much of his road alone. The years I had with him remain with me. I still make up funny songs for my kids, just like he did. I wonder, Micah, when I'm at the end of my road, will you hear my voice like I hear my dad's? If you have to throw a punch, make it count. Learn a trade, work hard. Don't regret something you can't fix. Be honest, it's always best. Go ask your mother. He had a temper, too. It scared me when his anger came out of nowhere. It scares me more when I do the same to my son. But then there were my favorite words. I love you. These are the ones that last. They weren't just words. He backed them up with time and interest and attention. Micah, how will you remember me? Will you think I'm average or something more? Will you have to reach back to my beginning to know me? Will my faults fade as you understand me more? Will you know the freedom forgiveness brings? Will you know I love you like my dad loved me? All three of us shared the same blood and build and even some habits. Though the sense of style might have skipped a generation. In the way we were made, our common design, there is power and beauty. In stature and thought and word and deed, my father was remarkably average. But to me, nothing about him was average. He was my dad. The things he said, the glint in his eyes, the stories of this little town where he began, all, to me, are remarkable. In the end, what defines a father is what he leaves behind. Maybe that's what I'm afraid of, or hoping for. Afraid the wrong things will stick, hoping the true things remain. If I could, I'd help my son to see the world differently than my dad did. If I could, I'd give my dad a moment with my son. He died before Micah was born. I'm always amazed when I see my father's mannerisms in Micah, and I wonder if dad would recognize them. I wonder if he'd see himself, but more complete, without the losses and disappointments that defined him.
I wonder if my dad would look into my son's eyes and realize that some things, some really good things, will last. <laughs> Hi, we're back here at Stageport. We're talking with Mark Havener. Mark, tell me about the home movie footage that's in your film. It um, di didn't come into the picture until probably part of the way through editing process. And then when I saw that footage, that's when I became emotionally attached to the film. It's great footage. Thanks. I saw my f my son in it, and I think it's universally a lot of, it looks like a lot of people's home movie footage. Well, and I know you've taken this to a lot of film festivals. What has the reaction been? Overwhelming. I never would have imagined that um, uh, a movie that I shot with me and one other person on a DVX 100 would have such a wide appeal. It's not about the camera, it's about the story. Yeah, definitely, and it has that u a universal appeal that I think connects with a lot of people. Yeah. So what's up for you next? Working on a, a feature documentary, I think it's a feature, about failure and fear. Wow. And how do we define success? I totally want to see that. Thank you so much for being on the show. I look forward to whatever you're doing next. And thank you for tuning into Cinema KC. Stay tuned, and we'll see you next week.